Well, Time is, Time.com that is, is out with its top 100 movies of all time. The movies are listed on Time.com. And with us to talk about the list of movie magic is Mark Coteney. He's deputy editor of Time Magazine's website and joins us from the Time Warner Center in New York. Good to see you. Good to see you, Frederica. Now, the official list is going to be on your website starting tomorrow, right? So we're right. Getting, giving it a little preview right mm -hmm. now. All right, so did Jaws make that top 100 list? Uh, no, Jaws did not, although there are Why two not? Spielbergers. Well, you know, we had, we could only have 100. There's a lot it of movies in history. It was impactful, no doubt. Jaws Definitely was. Definitely did, yes. Um, <laughs> So what's the criteria in order for this movie, a movie, to make it on the top 100? Well, the, the, our critics, our two critics had a different set of criteria, and we kind of merged the two. Um, Richard Schickel, one of our longtime critics at Time Magazine, looked at the list as, here are 100 movies that I really like. And when Richard Corliss, the other critic, was kind of coming to it, his conception was, here are 100 movies that represent all of cinema. And so we kind of took each one of their lists and we smushed them together, and there really wasn't much overlap. Each one had about... 20 in common, maybe, and then we kind of fought a lot and negotiated it down to the 100 that we wow, have. Wow, so Richard Square almost saw eye to eye? Um, <laughs> almost. <laughs> there, were a lot, there were quite a few movies that they disagreed on and, and some trading that went on, you know, in the process. And so how did you all as a committee decide on what movies to eliminate? W was it by, you know, the genre of movie, the categories, uh, how they impacted people or moved people, etc.? I, all of those things, really, um, and you know, sh honestly, some of it would, would would they both critics would agree. Some of it is just here's a movie I liked when I was 20, you know. Um, but uh, mm. yeah, all those things came into play. You know, um, Corliss, for instance, really insisted that we have something to represent South American cinema, so which is why City of God, which is a fairly new film, is on the list. And you know, Schickel felt very strongly that we should have something from the silent movie era. So we have a couple, you know, like Metropolis for one, or um, uh, Sherlock Jr., which is a Buster Keaton film. Well, when I look at the list, though, you talk of like the City of God, which is a fairly recent, within the you know past ten years, really mm -hmm. recent five years even. It almost looks like of the 100, many of these movies are modern day movies. Is there a reason for that? Well, um, not not nothing conscious. Um, I think that you know. Uh, Especially in the last 20 years or so, um, there were a lot, actually, I think our biggest decade was the 1980s. I think we had 16 films, or maybe not that many, maybe 15 films from the 1980s, um, and, and, you know, five from post-2000. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's tough because I think you're not always sure what's going to stand the test of yeah. time, you know, and, and a little, for instance, time hated some of the movies that we now think are <laughs> great, you know, like we hated Casablanca when it came out. Oh, my gosh, but that did make it on the list, I yes. noticed. Let's talk about some of the movies that did make it on the list. Okay. Uh, Finding Nemo, can't get any more current than that. Why in great the world? Great film. Yeah, I, that was Richard Corliss's um, big pick because he, he felt that we needed to represent the CGI movie, the, which is kind of the coming future of film. And, you know, it's also just a great story, no matter what. You know, it's technically brilliant, but also just really nice to look at. And Goodfellas? Goodfellas. I mean, really shifting gears here quite a bit. Yeah, uh, yeah, we, we're, yeah we're jumping around. <laughs> Goodfellas is one of three Scorsese films on the list, and um, it's probably the one that both critics agreed on most. Um, great, you know, kind of mob drama, maybe Scorsese's big finest moment and the kind of themes that he kind of touches on through a lot of his movies, the kind of Italian-American mafia kind of thing. Well, picture. Goodfellas was in. I didn't necessarily see any of the Godfathers on there. Oh, no, no. Godfather part one and two. Not part okay. three, but part one and two. I must have overlooked that. Yes. All right, just checking. Mm -hmm. Dr. Strangelove, that Stanley Kubrick You're right. film. You're uh, right. Very fun film, you know, from and very much of its time, the kind of Cold War paranoia thing. Peter Sellers is brilliant playing all these different roles. Um, uh, yeah, in one of Stanley Kubrick's great, great films, too. Some Like It Hot? Uh, some Like It Hot. Quite memorable did. for uh, most. Quite memorable. Quite memorable. Um, great performances from Jack Lemmon, Tony Curtis, and Marilyn Monroe. Although, interestingly enough, when that came out, Time Magazine kind of said that, you know, uh, Marilyn's been skinnier and, and sexier in other pictures, and they didn't really think that much of it. But, you know, looking back, it's truly a classic. And few will argue that It's a Wonderful Life deserves a spot on that list. Well, that's one of those movies that you almost just have to put on there. I mean, yeah. and, and we looked at it as, yes, you know, everyone has seen it a million times and it's become kind of this cliche, but really, you know, sit down with it with fresh eyes and it, it's, a, it's a really nice film. Really well done. Jimmy Stewart's probably never been better. At, and it tells a really compelling family story. Are you afraid that some folks might look at the list and say, wait a minute, are they kidding me? The, like The Fly, for instance. <laughs> the the yeah. remake and not necessarily mm -hmm. the original. Right. 
Well, that, the fly was our biggest fight, actually, because um, Corliss insisted on that, and Schickel thought it was appalling as a <laughs> film. Um, and, you know, I could see some of both sides, but really the, the idea behind the fly was that, it, you know, it's not just this gross picture, but if you think of it as kind of a metaphor for anything, like aging or dying of cancer or something like that, it's the, the idea of, like, bad things that, hap that can happen in your life and how you deal with them. And, and so trying we, to transform right, yourself. Right, exactly. And, and a couple of things that uh, we here noticed that were not on the list, and we were mm -hmm. aghast, like To Kill a Mockingbird, not on right. the list. No Sound of Music. Did I overlook that one? No Sound of Music no on this list? No Sound of Music, no. What's going on here? Well, again, you know, we had to pick 100. We, we, there, there were, <laughs> we, we got down into the 110s, 120s, and, and then we really started to just drop off a lot of movies that we really liked. Um, Blue Velvet was one that I really liked, and that was probably our 101st movie, and we had to drop that one, too. So and National Velvet. I don't think uh, I saw that on there, <laughs> speaking of velvets. Na no, no National Velvet. <laughs> Next time, consult me, Mark. Oh, well, you'll be, well, you're our first phone call. <laughs> All right. Mark Coatney, thanks so much of Time.com. And just in case you want to see more or learn a little bit more of all of these movies, check out Time.com, where you will see the listing starting tomorrow. All right. All right. Thanks a lot, Mark. All right. Thank you.